The best way to bullshit your essay, my friends. When I was in high school and still in college, I was the king BSer. Everybody knew it. I did book reports, got A's on them without reading the book. I'm gonna tell you how. When things are written really well, that's really what your teachers kind of care about. Yes, the information and everything is important too, but when something is written really well, it kind of, I wanna say, stumped my teachers to the point where they're like, wow, this is written really well. And the way I wrote it was not more so vague, but it was so cleverly broad that you couldn't say I was right or I was wrong. Let me give you an example. I was writing an essay for my friend, bullshitting for him. It was about a book called The Garden Party and how I had to relate Veblen's, one of Veblen's theories towards this book. I don't know what Veblen's theory was and I didn't even read the book. But the clever way I put it, in Veblen's article, specialized consumption of goods as an evidence of pecuniary strength had began to work out in a more or less elaborate system. What did I just say? I have no idea. I, re I really don't know what the hell I just said. But here's why bullshitting essays, writing so vaguely and so broad works. I could use what I wrote for the sense on anyone and it's going to make sense. Check it out. Einstein's theory began to work out in a more or less elaborate system. Nikola Tesla's theory began to work out in a more or less elaborate system. Bernie Sanders' economic fulfillment strategies began to work out in a more or less elaborate system. It'll work with anything, because I don't even know what I'm, I don't even know what that's relating to. So if you give it a, a total range, the range I give it, I said, you know, so I can't be wrong, I said, in a more or less elaborate system. That could be applied to anything. So much as so, if someone's reading that, they're, gonna, they're not gonna question, they're, gonna, they're not gonna say, Einstein's theory wasn't more and or less. And well, I could see, you know, no one's really gonna ponder that for so long. If you wrote in, in these types of, you know, in this context, if you wrote like this about anything, it'll just work. So I vaguely related things. I began, picture yourself a famous poet and write your book reports like you're a famous poet. Use contrasts, metaphors, similes, all the good stuff. One in-class book report I had, there was a passage from the book given to me and I had to describe how this passage fits uh, what I think the thesis is of the book and then, you know, go on from there. It was about some house, that caught on fire and burnt down. What could you possibly say? What I said was, the burning of the house, which resembles a stable family unit, was a metaphor for destruction. This family went through hardships and they struggled throughout life and what life threw at them. The fire, however, represents their ability to regrow and start fresh. The flames resonates their passion to get over that struggle. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying, but what I'm saying can definitely be applied in, in whatever book you're reading. Who doesn't go through trouble, right? What family doesn't kind of go through the poverty or like, you know, there's gotta be something. If you know the general idea about the book, oh, it's about a family who travel the world, they struggle then, you know, they finally made it to California for a new life. That's all I need to bullshit these kind of sentences and make it worthwhile. And my teacher's reading this like, wow, the fires and the embers resonate their passion to overcome this hardship. You know, it's very well said, even though I don't know what the fuck I'm saying, but it sounds good enough for your reader, your teacher to analyze and go, you know, it's written really well. There were some things I even got totally wrong. Like I mentioned the character that was already dead, but I still got a good grade on it. So you definitely can get away with it. Long story short, use those words, more or less. Give yourself some room with words like elaborate systems. If you've ever read a contract, that's how you should write your essays. You know, words like 
there to and for of, but not yet limited to, you know, like, Six it's like, oh my gosh, it's so, yeah, you'll, ne you'll never understand it, but the way it's written, you're like, man, this, this guy put in some thought. All right, let's just say I'm reading a book on the French Revolution, or I don't know, there's a main character, you know, Tale of Two Cities, one of the main characters. His attitudes conveyed more or less the thoughts he conjured relating but not limited to the life he wanted as well as the satisfaction of a grand yet small lifestyle. What did I say? I really don't know. I went one word after another, but if I read it, seems pretty good. And it puts it to whatever this person was thinking or has happened in the story, in this book, in his life, that sentence I just said has to fit some way or another. It's one of those, mm, I could see it. I could see it fit in there. And that is exactly why they're never going to mark you completely wrong if you write so, you know, well. But um, anyway, it's a bit tough. It is a talent being able to bullshit your way throughout school like I did pretty much. But these are great examples on how to do it. You guys are welcome. Stay tuned for my next rant. We're going to be doing these pretty much daily. Or you could drop out.